All right, so let's get into, this is just kind of how to work probabilities. Let's get into some theoretical probability here. Theoretical probability, as you may recall, uh, is used when we don't actually do the experiment, when we actually are just thinking about it. Um, we assume a couple things here. You might want to star this point right here. We're assuming that all outcomes are equally likely. So when you have uh, six, uh, you say you have a spinner that has five parts. You're assuming all five parts have equal, equal area. And they take up the same amount of space on the uh, spinner. If they don't, then we have to use geometry to figure that out. We're assuming, um, and that gets into uh, fair. We, get, we, we are assuming that um, everything is equally likely, which we know in real life isn't always true. When I flip a coin, I don't necessarily flip heads 50% of the time, all the time. So, determining theoretical probability, notice I've got a fraction bar here. That's because probability, like I said earlier, is a ratio. Let's just write this down. The probability of any event is, in your numerator, number of ways the event could happen. If we think about it, how many ways could it happen? So, if I'm doing probability of rolling a three, how many threes are there on a die? The other half of the ratio is total number of possibilities. So I'm doing a comparison. I am comparing the number of ways an event could happen to the total number of possibilities. That's why, since it's a ratio, that's why we can express this as a percent, because percents are ratios also. All right. So uh, this is pretty easy. Just want to make sure we, we run through these very quickly. Notice all five sectors are equal. So I want you to uh, pause the video right now. Work your way through these three problems. Take about uh, one minute, one minute, and make sure you have the notation. Go ahead and pause. All right, probability of spinning a four. So I'm going to write, well, this could be harder. Why don't I think? Probability of a four equals, well, there's one four out of five sectors, so that's one fifth. Probability of spinning an even number. Probability even. Let's see how many. There's still five sectors, so even numbers, I have two. Two to five, two out of five. What's probably is spinning a number less than four, so probability, I'll use my, use my less than sign. Uh, a lot of, some of you get confused on this, is four less than four? So no, it's not, so I don't count it. There are three numbers less than four. Okay, notice that does take out three-fifths of the space, so the ratio holds true for the geometry as well. Uh, so that's a very easy way to calculate probability. Now, let's get into uh, something called mutually exclusive events. We kind of touched on this earlier. We talked about the word or. Okay. When we talk about the word or, we're saying that both of these can't happen at the same time. We're saying either one could happen, but they're not going to overlap. So think back to that question. If I score two on that quiz, there's no way I could score two and four at the same time, right? It's either I score two or I score four, okay? And when I do that, so what I want you to highlight or underline, um, I can add the probabilities together, all right? Let's take a look at uh, what this means. At this point, I want you to reference the blue sheet that was passed out to you. On the back, you have all the possibilities for rolling two dice. A lot of people think you roll two dice, that's only 12 possibilities. Eh, wrong. If I roll a 1 on the first dot, I can roll a 1 and a 1, a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, 1 and a 4, 1 and a 5, 1 and a 6. Notice there's six possibilities just for rolling a 1 on the first dot. If I roll a 2 on this first dot, that's 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, uh, Two, six. You get the idea. Okay, if I roll a three, three, one, three, two, three, three. Notice for each number I roll on the first die, notice I said each. Each number I roll on the first die means six options for the second die. So that's six options for the first, six options for the second, each means multiply, 36 total options. So refer to your, uh, your sheet there. That tells you what all the possibilities are. It shows you. So 
So we're playing a game and you're rolling two fair dice. If you roll a total of five, you win. So let's write that five equals win. So looking at your sheet, that's, that could be two plus three, three plus two, one plus four, four plus one. Uh, I think that's it. If you roll a total of two, you lose. You look at your sheet, there's only one way to do that, right? One, one. If you roll anything else, the game continues. What's the probability that the game will end on the next turn? Okay, so I want you to work with your partner. Think about what that would, how would the game end? What would you have to roll for the game to end? Go ahead, pause the video, work on this with your partner. Uh, show the notation, show all the work, okay? All right, we're back. Now, for the game to end, kind of wrote this down, didn't we? I have to either roll a five or a two. So what I'm finding out here is what's the probability Oh my word. Almost done here, computer, don't kill me. It's not wanting to work today. I either have to roll, I have to find the probability of a two, try this again, or a five. Notice that word or, these are mutually exclusive events. I can't roll a two, can't roll a five, a sum. We're talking about a total of two. So either I roll a one, one. So there's only one way to roll a two out of 36, right? So the probability of rolling a two is one out of 36. Plus, probability of rolling a sum of five. I'll count it up. You have one, one, four. Four, one. It's different because one, I'm rolling a one on the first die. The other, I'm rolling a four on the first die. That's different. So 1, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. There are four ways out of 36 to roll a 5. So notice, all I'm doing here is I'm adding fractions. 1 36, these are ratios, right? 1 to 36 plus 4 to 36. And when you add fractions, you need common denominators. Lucky for us, we do. I didn't simplify this because it let me keep common denominators. Otherwise, we would have had one ninth, and I'd have to just go straight back to 436. When we get our answer, remember, add the numerators, keep the denominator the same. 5. Let's see if it'll let me actually do this. 536. Check. Is that simplified? Yes, it is. So my probability that the game will end is 536. Conversely, or on the other side. The probability that it will continue is 31 out of 36. So most likely this game, the game's going to go on for a while. All right. So your homework tonight involves both of these concepts, just working with probability, and it involves uh, theoretical probability. Guys, we did these examples for a reason. Use your notes when you are doing uh when you're doing the homework, all right? Good luck.